Welcome everyone to our second part of Venn diagrams. If you remember from our first Venn diagram lesson, we did everything associated with drawing Venns, understanding Venns, and the addition rule. Today, we're going to look at the four rules that you'll need to know to apply on the A-level maths. It's the four rules associated with Venn diagrams. We're going to go over addition rule again very quickly, independent rule, mutually exclusive, and find the condition rule. Stay tuned. Now, what is the addition rule? The addition rule goes like this. So P, A, U, B, and you notice there's a union there. So when you see a union, it's the addition rule. And that is P of A plus P of B minus P, A, and B. Remember, the union there is associated with the addition rule. Next rule is the independent rule. What do we do there? So on here, the independent rule says that P, A, times P of B would equal to P, A, and B. So when you see a question on an A-level paper that says the words independent, we then need to apply this formula here. Probability of A times probability of B equals probability of A and B. Third rule we need to know, mutually exclusive. Now what does that mean? Well this is when two events cannot happen at the same time. So when that happens we have probability of A times probability of B would actually equal to zero. Now what does that mean logically through a Venn? Well if I draw a Venn diagram to associate events A and B, when I have event A here, if event A is mutually exclusive to event B, in other words, cannot occur at the same time, this is the only time that A and B would have a separate circle. And now our fourth rule is the conditional rule. And what do I mean by that? Well, the conditional rule, slightly harder, is notated like that. Now you're going to see this in enough A-level papers and A-level questions. A with a line B. It's not a forward slash, it's like a vertical line. A line B. Now what that suggests is the condition. And the condition is the event B. That's the condition. So what you need to realize is that the letter that is on the right hand side is the condition. What you also must realize that probability of A line B and probability of B line A is actually not the same thing. Here, the condition is B, and here, the condition is A, because the letter on the right-hand side denotes the condition. So, let's go to our formula. So, probability of A line B, or condition B, equals probability of A and B over the condition, probability of B. This formula is associated with this. Whereas if I had that, I would write probability of B and A over A. Now what you need to realize here is the numerator A and B and the numerator here B and A are actually effectively the same thing. They are the same. So in this case, the numerator will give the same value. The only difference is because the condition here was on the right, and the condition here was on the right, the two, two formulas, the denominator, will be different. So just remember that formula there. So what we're going to do today are three examples associated with those four formulas that we looked at today. And here's example one. So we have probability of A equals 0.4, Probability of B is 0.35, and probability of A and B is 0.2. Just be mindful, A and B, if you think about that against a Venn diagram, you know that A and B is the overlap. It's the link that covers A and B, the overlap between these two, and that's 0.2. So the first question is draw a Venn. Now that's not a difficult one. The reason being we've got two events, A and B, but this A and B is given. As soon as A and B is given, everything opens up. So, we have events A and B. Now, if you remember before we talked about the word independent, we'll talk more about that when we do a question. 
But as far as you're concerned, and by default, when you draw events A and B on a Venn, always interlink them. The only time you disengage those two circles is when you see the word mutually exclusive. And because we don't see the words mutually exclusive at this point here, by default, A and B will be connected. So we know from here, A and B is 0 0.2. So we're going to write 0 0.2 here. And if all of A is 0 0.4, this means that this must be 0 0.2. And if all of B is 0 0.35, we must have a 0 0.15 there. And when you add all of this up, we get 0 0.55, which means this must be 0 0.45. So now we're going to go to um, part B. So this is part B. Problems of A, U, B. Now if you remember before when we did the addition rule, out of the four formulas, this was rule number one. As soon as you see a union there, we apply the addition rule. So this must be associated with this formula here. Product of A plus B minus product of A and B. Just remember, A, U, B, addition rule. Okay, so now we put this into place. So product of A is 0 0.4. Product of B, 0.35. And A and B is the overlap, minus 0 0.20. And if you work that out, you are going to get 0 0.55. Okay, now we're on part C of this question, related to the same Venn diagram. Now part C is asking us to work out a condition, B line A. If you remember what we said earlier, the condition is always on the right. And that letter A must be reflected on the denominator. So when we open it up, we get B and A over A. Just be mindful that these two letters, A and A, must be the same. This condition here must fit on the denominator. When we open this up and um, link it to our then, B and A is the overlap, A and B, it's exactly the same thing, 0 0.2. Probability of A is 0 0.4, and if you work that out, you get 2 over 4, or you get half. And now we're in part D of this question, and you can see here, slightly harder, we've got a condition, but we've also got a not here, an A not, or not A happening. So if we open that up based on the condition, and remember B is the condition here, we would have probability of A dash and B over probability of B. Again, be mindful that the right-hand side letter B must be on the denominator here and the second letter out of the two on the numerator. So what does that mean in terms of a Venn? Well, this top line means I'm allowed to be in B, I'm allowed to be in any of this part here, but A has kicked me out. Imagine being kicked out of A. So I could be 0 0.2 or 0 0.15, that's B, but A has kicked me out, so I'm now only 0 0.15. Probability of B is all of B, which is 0 0.35. And if you work that out, you get 15 over 35. In other words, you get three over seven. And right, now we're in example two of our three examples today. This one is slightly notched up from example one. So I have a probability event J, I have K, but now I've got a third event, L. J, K and L. But there are conditions with that. Events K and L are independent. Remember what we said earlier in our formula. J and L are mutually exclusive. And in addition to that, the overlap between J and K is 0 0.1. And our first question is draw a Venn. Well, is it as easy as that? Well, what we need to do is think about how we're going to put these circles together. Now, normally, our default would be three circles together, all stuck together here. But the problem is J and L are not allowed to be next to each other. So in this case, the letter K must be the holding ring. So let's draw that out first. Really important to label it. Because of the fact that J and L are mutually exclusive, they have to be apart doesn't matter about the word independent. Always by default, link the circles together. The only times you separate the circles is when you say mutually exclusive. So just because you see K and L independent, it doesn't stop the link. So in this case, K and L will be linked and K and J will be linked. We do know that J and K 
equals 0 0.1. So this point here is 0 0.1. And that's all we've got for now. So how do we finish off the rest of the Venn diagram? We all know that we need to fill this value in, this value in, this value in, this value, and the outside number. So what do we look at? Well, we have to look at this word independent. So if you remember earlier from our formulas, we know that K and L are independent. So if K and L are independent, we need to know that probability of K times probability of L is probability of K and L. That's our clue. So when you see the word independent, please associate it with this formula here. Now, do we know K? Well, K is then 0 0.45. Do we know L? Well, L happens to be 0 0.15. And if you use a calculator and you multiply these together, you should get 0 0.0675. Okay, so now we've got 0 0.0675, where do we plant that value? Well, this 0 0.0675 is associated with K and L. That must be here. So this value here must be 0 0.0675. Well, if I've got that value there, and I've got L as 0 0.15, then surely I can work out the remainder of L. In this case, using the calculator, we get 0 0.0825. In other words, 0 0.15 subtract 0 0.0675. We also know all of J is 0 0.25. That must mean this must be 0 0.15. We also know that K is made up of 0 0.45, well, at the moment, I've got 0 0.1. I've got 0 0.0675, which means that middle number must be 0 0.2825. So what do we need to now work out to finish off this then? Well, I've got one, two, three, four, five values. I need to work out that sixth value. We know all of these events add up to one, so let's just subtract it from one. 0 0.3175. Okay, now that we've got our Venn diagram from part A fully completed, we now need to answer some questions. Our first question is probability of J, U, K. So what does that mean? Remember we see the union. And if you remember earlier, when you see the union, you apply the addition law. So in this case, that must be probability of J and probability of K minus the probability of J and K. And because of the fact that we've com got a complete Venn diagram here, we can now start to input some values. So probability of J, all of J, 0 0.25. Probability of K, that we got from earlier, is 0 0.45. And probability of J and K, the overlap, which is 0 0.1. And you, when you work all of that out, you should then get a value of 0 0.6. Okay, now we're in part C, probability of J dash and L dash. Now this is not a union, so do not apply the addition law. This is where the numbers overlap. What this is saying is I can't be in J, so I have to scrap these two. I can't be in L, I have to scrap these two. So think about what numbers we've got left. I cannot be in J and I cannot be in L. I cannot have any association with these two. I cannot have any association with these two but I can have an association with this number and, don't forget, the outside number. And if you work that out, we get 0 0.6. Okay, our next question, probably a J line K. Well, that's the condition again, remember? And the second letter is so important. I keep stressing that, that's the condition. So if you open it up, J and K over probability of K. Please don't get so tempted to, or tempted to put the numbers in first before allocating the formula. So J and K, what do we get? Well, J and K is the overlap. We know that is 0 0.1. And probability of K is all of K together. And we know from all of K together is 0 0.45. And you, when you work that out on the calculator, you will get two out of nine. So now we're in part E of this question. And this is quite a complicated where you have K, the line, which is the condition, J and J dash and L dash. Now please don't be afraid of this one. Just think about it and do it slowly. The condition comes first. 
So we know that that is probability of K and J dash and L dash. So what we've done, we've amalgamated this letter K with an and with these two. And remember from earlier, what's the condition? The condition is the right-hand side. So it's the probability of J dash and L dash. So what does that mean in terms of values? Well, looking at this, think about in words. It means I'm allowed to be in K, but I can't be anywhere near J, and I can't be anywhere near L. By looking at that, what is the only value? I can be in K, but I can't be in J, and I can't be in L. So surely the numerator must be 0.2825. Now we come to the denominator. What does J dash and L dash mean? Well, J dash and L dash is what we had done earlier. Can't, no association with J, no association of L, so it must be these two added together, which is 0 0.6. And when you work that out on the calculator, you should get 0 0.471. And that's the end of example two. Now we're in example three. Now if you look at this, I've got some information here. Luckily, it's only two events at the moment. Probably of A is 0 0.4. A and B, and you know it's the overlap between is 0 0.12, but A and B are independent. And the question is, find the probability of B. It doesn't ask for a Venn diagram at this stage. So think about the word independent. That's the key word. And you know from our formulas that we know that independent means that probability of A times probability of B must equal to probability of A and B. Really important, do not disregard that word. That word is associated with this formula here. Now all it is is a little bit of rearranging, making B the subject. So to get B the subject, we are gonna get probability of A and B, which is 0 0.12, and then we're gonna divide it by probability of A, which is 0 0.4. And then you'd work that out on the calculator, and you would get 0 0.3. Okay, part B from the same question. Asks us to work at A dash and B dash. Well, sometimes if we need to, and even though it doesn't ask to, what can we do? What I suggest is we draw a Venn diagram. So that's what we're gonna do here. Now, let's not take this for granted. I automatically by default put the links overlapping each other. Why? Because it's a default. The only time I separate the links, A and B, is remember when we see the words mutually exclusive. Look around the question. At no point do I see those words. So by default, A and B link up. So we know that A and B is 0 0.12. We know from earlier that all of B was 0 0.3, which means that this bit here must be 0 0.18. We know all of A is 0 0.4, which means this one must be 0 0.28. So if you add all of this together and subtract from one, you'd get this value here, 0 0.42. But the question's asking A dash and B dash. In other words, no association with A, no association with B, so it can only be 0 0.42. The point I'm making here, is just because the question does not ask you for a then, sometimes drawing a then will assist you in getting the answer. Now we're on question C. Now before we do question C, I've just given us the answer, just a reminder of question B. That was our Venn diagram. And we had to work out from earlier, probably with A, A dash and B dash, which was 0.42. Now a new question comes up. I've got a new event C. So now I've got my third ring to involve with the same conditions as before for A and B. Now probability of C has a, a, is 0 0.4. A and C are now mutually exclusive. Remember what we said, mutually exclusive, circles come apart. B and C, probability is 0 0.1, so that must be the overlap. And now what we're asked to do is redraw the Venn. What I mean by redrawing the Venn is factoring A and B as earlier, changing some of the numbers around, and then associating it with C. What we need to do is think about what is the holding ring? Is it A, B, or C? Well, you know that A and C are mutually exclusive, which means the letter B must be the holding ring. So this must be A, B, and C. 
Remember, B can associate with C, linking it together, and B and A can be linked together. The only condition was A and C were mutually exclusive. We do know that probably B and C is 0 0.1, that's 0 0.1. We know that the, the overall C was 0 0.4. Well, that means this must be 0 0.3. Now, if you look at this point here, well, we can actually replicate this part here. So that's 0 0.28. That's 0 0.12. The only difference is we have to find a new number here. Well, all of B, if you remember earlier from a previous question, was 0 0.3. Well, if you add these together, you get 0 0.22, which means this must be 0 0.08. And then lastly, once you work that out, we get 0 0.2 as the leftover. Now we're on question D. The condition here is a right-hand side C. And remember, when we open it up, we get B and C, and the denominator must associate with this right-hand side here, which is C. Problem of B, condition C. Well, B and C, we know that the, the, the overlap is 0 0.1, and we know that all of C is 0 0.4, and then you'd get 0 0.25 as your answer. Okay, now we're in our last part of the question, and I've ended with quite a challenging question here. Product of A and, and in brackets, not B, union C. Well, let's look at the Venn diagram that we've got. We can open up the addition rule, but by looking at this diagram, we can use our trick that we did last time. So let's look at the brackets first. The bracket suggests I cannot have B. So if I look at this, I cannot have B. I can have either there, there, or there. And you can see those ticks react to all events not associated with B. I can also have C, which means I can also have that one. So let, before I go on to the A, let me just remind you again how I got those ticks. Not B means any, any event not associated with the B ring. So it's 0 0.28, 0 0.3, and 0 0.2. Because it's a union and not an and, I then have to, in addition to that, tick the C. Well, I need to finish off the C, so I put 0 0.1. And now this A comes in. And A comes in and says, you know what? I can only be in my ring here, A. So which of these, blue, these purple ticks are in A? Well, I can't have that 0 0.1, no association of A. 0 0.3, far away from A. 0 0.2, further away from A. The only tick that is in A is actually 0 0.28, and that will be your answer. I really hope you enjoyed the lesson. I hope you enjoyed the free examples. Please go over it again, and if you like it, please put a thumbs up. Thank you, bye-bye.